God bless you and welcome to today's edition of Standing Together. I'm Fergus Scarf. We have a power pack impactful program for you today. If you need hope, if you need encouragement, if you need a touch from the Lord, don't change the dial for the next 30 minutes. So coming up for you today, we have a really wonderful show. We have special guests, Andy and Jen Cannon from Gospel Grenades. We love those guys. We have a word of encouragement from our friend Ben Corson. And most important of all, we will take time before the Lord to pray for you at this time time of need. If we can be praying for you, if we can bless you in the precious name of Jesus, if we can be standing with you, even if it is difficult, even if it is challenging, even if it's one of those moments when you don't think you can make it, well, we pray that Andy and Jen, as they share their story, perhaps even I might even tell you myself, there are times in the things of our lives when only God can make the difference. And that's the Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you do not know him today, if you don't have him resting and abiding in your heart, well, we would love to share this story, this gospel truth, and bring into your life a Savior who will set you free. Well, as I say, we're going to spend time with Andy and Jen Cannon. But we got lots coming up on God TV this week. Coming up on this Friday, we have a wonderful time, our call for prayer, when we dedicate the whole program to pray for you. We have our special guest, Werner Nachtigall, will be joining us. And we will be partnering with him, not just in our call for prayer. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. But also a whole series of programs coming up for you in May. We see we're reaching out with Werner and his mission team to pray for the nations of the world, to stand before the Father, believing that the Lord will equip us all to be his messengers, to do the work, as Paul said to Timothy, to do the work of an evangelist, to be sharing the good news. Can I be honest with you? In this struggling season, this time when things are difficult, surely we have to tell our neighbors, we have to tell our loved ones, we have to tell our friends that Jesus is our risen King. Well, we have a wonderful video as to some of the things that are coming up for you on God TV. And then I'll be joined by Andy and Jen Cannon. Welcome to Go Stories. We want to show you how God is using ordinary Christians. Ten years ago, a movement started Global Outreach Day and God is using simple believers around the world, and we receive amazing testimonies. There are no superstars in the kingdom of God. Cassius Clay, the famous boxer, was sitting in a plane right before departure. The stewardess came and she said, fasten seat belt. He replied and he said, I don't need a belt. I am Superman. The stewardess said, well, Superman doesn't need a plane. Fasten your seat belt. There are no supermen in the kingdom of God. God can use simple believers. There was a young girl, her name is Rispa, 13 years old. She lived in Uganda. She got saved on Global Outreach Day and then her father died. Watch this. In 2015, when I entered the house of Mr. Saab, after hearing a loud noise of crying, I found him on the bed lying dead. When I came in the house, I found Rispa was interceding for the dad who was dead. not breathing, he was not moving, he was completely dead. Here in the village, 
uh, in some areas, doctors have to check. But with him, uh, we, we didn't have any person uh, about, who works about health. So we joined the hands, we prayed highly for the life of Mr. Saab. When my daughter was praying, something just came in power and hit me. When it hit me, that is when I realized that I was coming back to life. Amen! Jesus! Thank you! Thank you! We had to come out with him from the room. People who were crying started rejoicing and some of them received Jesus Christ as their personal savior. In my life, I, do, I wouldn't miss two things. That is drinking. Secondly, I couldn't miss out fornication and adultery. That was a part of my life. He was not uh, in salvation. We prayed for him. We led him into salvation. And now he's saved. He's a man of God. He's working for God. He's a pastor. I rejoice in Jesus. I thank God for that great full work. Amen. 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 I thank God for the good work he did into his life. If God could use a 13-year-old girl, he can use you. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will do the same things. So this is my challenge for you. In the next week, share the gospel with at least one person or pray for a sick person and expect God to use you. He is with you. Amazing, amazing. That's Werner Nachtigall. There are no superheroes in the kingdom of God. We will be partnering with Werner throughout the beginning of May for his global outreach. It's going to be amazing. Well, talking of evangelists that walk in the fire and the passion of God, we would like to welcome to the set today Andy and Jen Cannon from Gospel Grenades. Andy and Jen, God bless you. Welcome to the program. Hey. Hey, nice to be with you guys. Very good to be with our God TV family. Right. It's exciting. I want to ask you a straight up question. The straight up question is this, the two great commissions that the Lord gave us to go into all the world and preach the gospel and that these signs would follow them that believe, Matthew 28 and Mark 16. Why do we as the body of Christ think that's only for evangelists to do? <laughs> that's a great question one that i get asked quite a lot listen the power of god is for everyone evangelists are there to teach and train and equip those in the works of ministry okay we are all called to share our faith the power of god is for all those that believe god wants to demonstrate his power through every believer if you have a mouth you have words you carry life on those words you speak it and god will move mm. oh uh, jen just listening to your testimony and knowing your hearts for the gospel you guys have come so far the lord has ministered to your life in such a wonderful way for those that don't know andy and jen's story jen would you share some of the background to where the lord has brought you from and what he's doing in your life yeah, of course, it'd be a pleasure. So we are, I was brought up in a beautiful Christian home, very blessed, wonderful parents, youngest of three children. And um, almost 10 years ago, so nine years we've been married. So 10 years ago, God brought um, Andrew into my life and he was living in a discipleship home in, um, not far and it was linked to the church that we were both involved in well andrew wasn't involved before and um andrew had a real different background to me um <laughs> he had addiction issues and um drink drugs and um very very different and had a radical encounter with jesus christ 
completely set free on his very first encounter with the Lord. And um, yeah, I got to see that transformation because I saw this broken man come into church. And, you know, a week later, I saw somebody very different. And from afar, I got to see that journey and um, very, very beautiful. And um, it really is my favorite testimony out there of just one touch from the King, just calling on his name. And things were very, very different for Andrew. Things, he was delivered instantly, healed, set free, and life has been absolutely beautiful ever since. Life has been an absolute wonderful journey, Fergus. In the nine years Jen and I have been together, you know, we've had mountaintop moments, in the valley moments, and then those mundane moments where God still shows up in the mundane. I like to say this, there is miracles in the mundane. Jen and I have had great highs, lows, and the mundanes. And God has been in the journey from the very beginning, and it's been wonderful. It really has. Absolutely. So how did you guys get discipled? How did you actually walk out? Because you have such an extraordinary call. I've seen you minister with grace and power. I've seen them come running to the front, but you've actually tied that together with a family that works. You've built a home that works. How, what, Andy, what's the journey that the Lord's taken you on? Literally from a uh, sinner saved by grace to a mature gospel minister uh, ministering around the world. That's a great question. So my life was quite destructive um, and then I moved into a rehab um, and then I got saved as Jen's just mentioned and I stayed in there Fergus for nine months. I, I got saved after three days of being there. I quite like the fact that it was after three <laughs> days. You know there's a story in the Bible where something extremely significant happens after three days and I was in this discipleship center. I met the Lord after three days and I stayed in there for nine months. And there was something within that nine months of me being discipled by godly men and godly women that God deposited something in my life that was not there before. Mm. And it was one of, of peace and of vulnerability and accountability. So then, of course, two years later, Jen and I get married and then we... We buy our home together and I wanted to implement that. And Jen had been brought up in her family with the God, godly values, godly principles. We pray, we honor one another, we bless one another, we speak life over one another. So I came from complete darkness into light. Jen, many, many years ago, came from darkness into light. Jen had been raised as a believer. I'd become a believer and there was this synergy of Jen's wealth and history in the Lord to my new salvation and radicalness in the yeah. Lord that it was just like two hands washing one another. It was a beautiful moment and we have this wonderful home now and we, we travel extensively, unfortunately not at the moment. That's a whole new challenge within itself, being at home a great deal longer than you normally are. But we have a home of peace. We contend for peace. Peace is important to Jen and I. Yeah. If peace isn't in it, the Prince of Peace cannot be in it. So we contend and we fight for unity and for peace. And we want this house to be a house. Like as for me and my wife, this yeah. house, we will worship the Lord. Yeah. Oh, this is so good, Jen. I need to hear this from Jen's side. Uh, Jen, how yeah. do you build and sustain this home of peace, especially when a red-headed evangelist is stuck at home <laughs> for the last year? How do you keep the peace yeah. of God in your home? We, we want to know the true answers. Come on. Oh, yeah. yeah, please pray for me, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Can we just do this now? Can you stretch out your hands? <laughs> no, honestly, um, for me, the way the Lord speaks to me, Fergus, is really through peace. I really have this way with him that is just so precious and it's really subtle. Um, but it re really is, peace is my guide in the Lord. So if we're embarking on something, if we're asked to do something, if I have peace in it, 
it sounds really simple, but I know mm. God's mm. all over it. I know he's mm. guiding the way it's of him. And if I start to lose my peace in something, um, you know, it can be a huge, big decision. And if I just start to get this unrest and lose my peace, I know it's the Lord saying to me, just back off, mm. just back off from this, just mm. take it easy. Um, so really peace is in the Lord is my guide. And I'm just really blessed that he speaks to me that way because it really has shown to be so fruitful time and time again. Absolutely. And one of the things, Fergus, is, you know, as spirit filled believers, as one who have denied themselves, picked up the cross and followed Jesus, mm. sometimes the word routine mm. can be not thought as positively towards as it should. It can almost sound like a religious mindset, but routine, if fruitful, is an excellent thing, right? So we get up, we spend time together. We speak to one another. You know, we read our words. Sometimes I just, if I'm not reading my word, I will jump on a YouTube, watch a sermon, so forth. Jen's making notes and this kind of thing. And there's a routine. A gardener routinely checks the garden to make sure things aren't growing unexpectedly or unwantedly. And this is what we do. So we try and implement a healthy routine. Let's change that word from routine because some people don't like that. Mm. We uh, maintain a healthy structure which enables us to face out into this world with hope. Oh, this is so, so good. God TV family, Andy and Jen are sharing truths from the, 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 the gospel, the king's domain, the kingdom of God that have impacted and transformed their lives. Well, we'll be back with Andy and Jen. I want to make sure that we all have the opportunity for them to pray over us and our prayer needs. So if you've not already done so, please go to god.tv forward slash prayer and we'll have the team and Andy and Jen pray over your prayer requests at the end of the broadcast. I'll be back with Andy and Jen right after this. We're too blessed to be stressed. Faith comes out of your spirit. With a heart, man believes. You need to take the limits off God. And to do that, you have to use your imagination. The way to bring enthusiasm into every ordinary day, do everything in the name of Jesus. Death is not in front of us. Judgment is not in front of us. It's behind us. Mornings on God TV. Morning, day, or night. There's a way you can access faith-focused content for every part of your life, live or on demand. God is raising up the prophetic and the apostolic in nations around the world. Stay close. Stay connected. Pray consistently. Pray without ceasing. The key is hearing what God says and doing what He says. Download the God TV app today. Available on Android, iOS, Roku, and Apple TV. Welcome back to this edition of Standing Together with Andy and Jen Cannon. Andy and Jen, we would love for you to pray over the God TV family. Uh, uh, Andy, I'm going to pitch this to you first. Then I'm going to have uh, Jen pray a little in, in a moment or two. But Andy, here as, as an example of some of the prayer requests that we're getting from our viewers around the world, Rani in India says, my mother's suffering from COVID in hospital in Mumbai. Please pray for her recovery in the name of Jesus. Donna in the US have been suffering from severe anxiety and depression and even suffering from a dizziness. Uh, tried many medications. She says, simply, I want my life back. Joanne says, healing of digestive issues. Princess is praying for a long life. In India, I pray that she passes her exams. And in the US again, praying for wisdom knowledge and understanding in the name of Jesus. Andy, would you pray over the needs of our viewers? These are examples, but please pray, sir. We would really love breakthrough would, there. 
Absolutely, I would be honored to. So I just pray right now for those digestive issues. And we just say, God, we ask right now by your sovereign hand that you touch them right now, Lord. We touch, we ask God that you touch anyone who is suffering with their gut, with their stomach, with their diaphragm, with their digestive system. We speak life. We speak healing over them right now. We speak for those who are excelling or depleting in education. And we speak wisdom and the right answers over you right now we speak for education and hey what about my sister in india who is suffering or knows somebody who's suffering with covid19 we speak life over those lungs right now we speak health to the blood we speak against blood clotting and we speak life over you right now my sister who was struggling with anxiety i myself suffered great with anxiety so I join my faith with you and I say be healed now of stress worry and anxiety God delivered me and I know my sister he can deliver you I pray for a release right now in the mighty name of Jesus for peace to come over you and your thoughts and your home I just pray right now for that peace the shalom of God to come over each and every one of you and that God will give you all your breakthrough in Jesus mighty name Amen. 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 If we can be praying for you, brothers and sisters, if we can stand with you, Andy and Jen and I, we're all praying for you, believing that the Lord will minister to you greatly in the name of Jesus. Again, go to our website, god.tv forward slash prayer. Remember, at the end of the week, we'll be joined by Vernon Achtegal for a special season, call for prayer season. We want to pray for you. Not only do we want to pray for you, we want to see your life turned around so that that great test that we may be facing turns into that wonderful testimony that glorifies the Lord. Well, Jen, before we go, we've got a video coming up from uh, Ben Corson. I want you to pray for all of us that have been absolutely Absolutely blown away by your testimony of walking in the peace of God. Jen, would you lead us? Would you pray for us? Pray for Andy and for Fergus and for all the guys out there that we would be led by God's peace. What a precious gift that he's given us. Jen, please pray for the God TV family right now. Absolutely. It'd be my privilege. And one thing I just wanted to say, Fergus, is last year, um, in amongst all this unprecedented time, I felt um, there was um, a, a moment where I said, God, why are, we, why are we experiencing this peace? And I just felt the scripture come out of me. You keep in perfect peace all those who trust you and whose minds and thoughts are fixed on you. So I am just praying right now Amen. for everybody who hears the sound of my voice. Amen. I'm praying for you, Fergus. I'm praying for Andrew. I'm praying for the God TV family. Amen. I pray that each and every one of us, that we are able to fix our minds and our thoughts on the Lord Jesus Christ and that we trust him absolutely, completely, that he is, we recognize him for absolutely who he is and that births trust and our thoughts to focus on him mm -hmm. and I believe that as we do that there is absolutely nothing that is even will, will show of any significance anything that is standing up to to bring to take your peace away I just pray now that as you focus on the Lord Jesus Christ as you lock eyes with the Prince of Peace that you will be set free that you will be healed that you will be delivered and that every person watching will just be able to just walk in the shalom peace of the Lord in the name of Jesus I pray it amen Amen oh, and oh, amen. Oh, Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Jen. How can we get hold of you and your ministry? Come on, tell us. Give us a website. Oh, absolutely. Gospelgrenades.com. Quite simple. <laughs> well, we love you guys. We honor you in the name of Jesus. We are praying for you that they'll soon be back on worldwide ministry. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. That's Andy and Jen Cannon from gospelgrenades.com. Well, we promised you before the end of this broadcast that we would share another word of hope, a wonderful word of exhortation from our friend on the West Coast, Ben Corson.
In the year 1953, Sir Edmund Hillary, along with Tenzing Norgay, became the first men in the history of humanity to climb Mount Everest. Standing at over 29,000 feet tall, this was the largest obstacle on planet Earth. Yet, Sir Edmund Hillary said, it is not the mountain that we've conquered, but ourselves. It's as if the mountain was an outward projection of the inward obstacles he faced in his mind. So too, Jesus believed that with a certain perspective, you could overcome any obstacle. He said that if you have a mustard seed of faith, you can move mountains. Now the phrase we're moving mountains was actually a common proverb and saying in Jesus's time. It literally meant to remove difficulties. In fact, if you were a really good teacher as a Jewish rabbi and you could explain and interpret a text, you were said to have plucked up or even pulverized mountains. So Jesus is saying that with a mindset of faith, F-A-I-T-H, forward all issues to heaven, you can pluck up and pulverize any mountain, you can remove any difficulty, you can overcome any obstacle. So too, we've been called to pulverize our mountains, not to see the obstacle in all of our opportunities. You're gonna see the opportunities in your every obstacle. With a mustard seed of faith, we're not gonna tell our God how big our mountain is. We're gonna tell our mountain how big our God is. That's Ben Corson with a word from heaven. How about that? Faith, F-A-I-T-H, forward all issues to heaven. Oh, what a blessing that is. What encouragement. We pray that you will find that mountain moving faith at this time. That what Andy and Jen have shared, that the example that they are living out of their lives. I think we all need to rewind this one and listen to it again. Well, we pray that this episode of Standing Together has blessed you. We pray that you know that we are here to pray for you and to pray with you. Don't forget to go to god.tv forward slash prayer. Remember this Friday, we have our special call for prayer with Werner Nachtigall. But from me, Fergus Scarf, and indeed the entire God TV team, until next time we get together around the televisions on Standing Together, we bless you in the precious name of Jesus. Until next week, guys. God bless you and shalom. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your testimony or prayer request to hope.god.tv today. Also, please consider becoming a God TV partner. For more information, visit god.tv.